what's your name? The mountains shake and crumble. What's your name? The oceans roar and tumble. be seated this morning. We aren't going to bow your heads, close your eyes, because some of you would never come back from that. I think you did that this morning. Welcome to Time Change Sunday. Woo! Yeah, you are not imagining yourself. You made it this morning. Hey, you want to go over some announcements? You got a bulletin this morning with you. Just a quick note about some of the things coming up. We will let the kids go to Super Kids Church in just a little bit. This morning, so kids be ready to go and have fun after the offering is received this morning. Um, Wednesday night we have our normal activities. We have our youth group that meets out in here in this area. Our Bible study in Revelation chapter 18 on Babylon meets in that classroom back there. And then over in the Life Center, the small building next door, we have our Kids Jam Explorers from 5 through 12 meet on Wednesday. Come out and be a part of that at 7 o'clock on Wednesdays. It's a lot of fun. And then on Friday... We are taking a group of students, I think we're taking 17 to 20 kids to fine arts, so please pray for us. Those trips, those trips are, the, hard, the older you get, the harder it is, because, yeah, I guess that's just me. Okay, so anyway, we're going to, we're going to have, we're taking the, all these kids, it's going to be actually a lot of fun. The kids get a chance to do ministry and uh, kind of develop their ministry gifts. So we're going to leave about uh, 145. We got, get together. Hopefully we can leave by 2 o'clock on Friday. And then we're going to be back sometime on Saturday. We'll, 
Our Saturday schedule normally has been 7.30 at night and we get back, so if it's earlier, we'll announce that to be announced. So if you have a student, kind of stay tuned if they're going to go to the Fine Arts Festival. Because we're getting back later on Saturday, we're not going to have prayer service on Saturday night, so please make that change to your schedule as well. We also uh, are taking up donations for Easter eggs. And so if you'd like to bring eggs or bring candy, you can do that. And Tiana and I went out and bought 400 pieces of candy and 400 eggshells. It cost us about $30 to do that because eggs are about $50. For 50 you get about 2 bucks at Walmart. So it, it doesn't cost a lot to do it, and you can make a huge impact. Our goal is to do 7,500 7, eggs this year. And the reason we're doing a lot of eggs is because we're expecting a lot of kids. So, you know, there are kids in Oregon that haven't seen the outside, the outdoors, the grass, for like a year and a half. So they're looking forward to coming and finding eggs. So uh, make sure that you want to, we want to, and we want every kid that wants to come to have a basket full of eggs. There's nothing worse than go to an egg hunt and getting like two eggs. That's just depressing. We want those kids to go, mommy, my basket's not big enough. Yeah, we rock. So we want to do that. So please, be, please, if you can help us do that, that's the only way we're going to meet that goal. We appreciate your help so much. Lastly, I want to talk about the River Life School Endowment. We've received four, uh, almost $5,000 already for the endowment just in our church services and our church giving. We want to encourage you, if you'd like to give toward the endowment, um, we're asking for a, either a monthly gift or a one-time gift. Um, if you give you $25 or $33 a month, it gets you almost $100. If you do $100 a month, it's $300 total over the course of... March, April, and May, or if you do 350 that would give $1,000 over the course of three months. And uh, every, every dollar that you give will go into an account that will only use the earnings off the account. We're not going to, the, the principal will always stay in that account. So once you give it, it's there. And it's always going to be there. So we're excited about that. We're excited about the endowment. And we appreciate all of you who have already given and those of you who are going to continue to give. We want to encourage you to do that today as well. Um, I wanted to share scripture as we prepare to worship the Lord today. Psalm 34 says this, I will bless the Lord at all times. Daylight savings times is one of the all times, right? His praise will continually be in my mouth. I will oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Praise is meant to be something we do together. So we're, we're going to magnify the Lord together. I know some of you are tired. I know we're all drag, a little bit draggy today. But we're going to worship the Lord today, and we're going give, to give, give, uh, let, his, let his name be worthy today. We're going to lift up his name today and worship the Lord with our heart, hearts today. Let's stand together and let's worship him today. Praise God. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, kindness of a Savior. The hope of
darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken and great are you Lord it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only and great are you lord you give life you are love you bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken and great are you Lord it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out Father, we thank you that we can run to you today. And Lord, we can find acceptance in the presence of the living God today because of what Jesus Christ did for us when he gave himself for us today. Hallelujah, Lord. You're worthy today to receive the glory and the honor and the praise expressed here today. God, as we choose to draw ourselves near to you, Lord Jesus, you true to draw, choose to draw near to us today as well. And Father, we thank you for that. 
And so, Lord, today as we draw with the full assurance of our faith to your presence today, God, we ask that you administer, Lord, to people in their physical needs. God, that you just touch them today. Lord, we, we want to pray for Nicola Murray today. She's recovering after the, after the birth of her baby. God, that you'd have your hand upon her and this little baby boy. God, that you just continue to strengthen them and minister to them, we pray in Jesus' name. Father God, that your hand would be upon those who are here today that may be struggling, Lord, in their health. Father God, that your healing would be made manifest in their bodies right now for your glory. Jesus, that you would make all the difference right now in Jesus' name, that you would heal and restore and minister to your people today. Father, we think of people whose needs aren't physical, but, Lord, they're emotional today. Father, we want to pray for those that that need a touch in their heart, that need encouragement today, that need strength today, that need hope today. Jesus, that you would meet people where they are. Think of uh, Judy, who just lost her mom last night, and her husband, Randy. God, we just pray for them and ask for your peace to guard their hearts this morning, Jesus, in your name. Touch them today. Encourage them with your presence, we ask in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for coming alongside us and ministering, Lord, your provision and your presence to all of us that have need of you today. Lord, you're here today to minister to your people with your grace and your presence. God, we thank you for what you're working toward us and in us today for your glory in Jesus' precious name. And everyone said amen and amen. You may be seated this morning in the Lord's presence today. God bless you. Bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, musicians, for your help this morning. Appreciate it. Praise the Lord. Thank you, guys. Did you guys like the new song? Maybe some of you are like, what new song? The Living Hope was a song we never sung before. So, Isn't that a great song? I love that song. That is great. You guys, you guys sound like rock stars up here. I'm just telling you. That's awesome. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Hey, we want to just take a moment and uh, recognize our guests that are here this morning. So, ushers, if you would come forward. If this is your first time at River of Life or you've never filled out a communication card, maybe you woke up this morning and stumbled in here today. We're so glad that you're here. So if you're here for the first time, raise your hand. The ushers want to get some information about you, about our church, who we are, kind of why we worship the way we do. We're so glad that you're with us today. We're so glad you we're a part of us today. Uh, if you take that, take that envelope, everything in the envelope is for you. The only thing that we want back is uh, the communication card that's in there. It asks for your name, address, phone number. You flip it over to the side. There's a check if you want a million dollars. Just kidding. I wanted to see how many I could give out. If I said that. No, just flip it on the back side. Interested in ministries and church that you're interested in, you check those things off so we can let people know and get in contact with you. We're so glad that you're here with us, worshiping the Lord with us today. Can we give our guests a hand that have come to worship the Lord with us today? Praise the Lord. It's good to have you here today. Hey, we want to wait on you for the morning tithes and offerings today. Uh, if you look in your bulletin, it actually has a list of how much money uh, um, they're given every week. And you'll notice there on the endowment that so far we had almost $5,000 coming in the endowment. We want to thank you for doing that. We appreciate that. Uh, if you'd like to give to the endowment, you can also do that here. Uh, you can go ahead and mark an envelope. Or if you have a check, one of those things people used to use, you can go ahead and write that out and fill it out and put it in the back as well and mark it for the endowment. Uh, we want to encourage you to give to the Lord today. God has been so faithful to us. And, and giving is a part of our response to the faithfulness and to the provision of God. And so as God has continued to be faithful, we want to continue to be faithful to him and recognize our opportunity to participate in giving today. So if you'd like to give, there's a box in the back that you can go ahead and give your tithes and offerings into today. If you'd like to give online, you can go to our website. Uh, the information is up there, riverlifecc.net. And uh, you just go there, click the online giving tab, and then the next tab on the next one is a donate now button. You click that, and it's that easy. You can give a one-time gift or a monthly gift uh, through PayPal. We encourage you to do that. We're so grateful for your giving today. Let's ask the Lord's blessing upon his offering this morning. Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have, Lord, to give to you today. We pray, Lord, that you'd bless these gifts as they're used for the furtherance of your work in your kingdom. Father, we believe today... These gifts are vital for us to reach our community for Jesus. We want to see our community come to know Jesus in a real and powerful way. Thank you for your provision for this church. Thank you for using your people, God, as vehicles of your provision today. God, we pray that you'd bless them, that you provide for them. Jesus, that you'd bless them with all spiritual blessings in Christ as they're so faithful to give to the Lord, the God that they love today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, at this time, kids can go to Super Kids Church. You can follow Harley. And she's going to make her way out 
out to the Life Center. So kids, come on out. It's a lot of fun next door. And as they do that, the rest of you can open up your Bibles, if you would, to the book of Jonah, chapter 4. We're kind of going through a series in Jonah, and we are at the end. The end. The story of Jonah is a story of God's love. That's demonstrated. We looked at Jonah chapter 1, and we talked about how God loves us to pursue us. Um, We looked at Jonah chapter 2, how God loves us even when we're stubborn. God still loves us even in the midst of our stubbornness. Chapter 3, we looked at last week, how God has a passion for us, and how God has a passion for the lost, that is trying to reach the lost. Today in Jonah chapter 4, we're going to look at the scripture, how it shows us that God loves us even when we're stupid. That's right. God loves you even when you're stupid. When, when you do the wrong thing, God still loves you, and God's willing to pursue you. And we're going to look at that story today. So as we're looking at Jonah chapter 4, I want to actually kind of tag in the last verse, last verse of chapter 3 and then kind of go to chapter 4 because I think it's important for context to look at both of those verses today. So we're looking at Jonah chapter 3, verse 10, then we're skipping down to Jonah chapter 4, and it says this. Then God saw Nineveh's works... How they had turned from their evil way, and God relented from the disaster that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do that. Chapter 4. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he became angry. So he prayed to the Lord and said, Ah, Lord, was this not what I said when I was still in my country? Therefore I fled previously to Tarshish, for I knew that you are gracious and merciful, God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. Therefore, now, Lord, take my life from me, for it's better for me to die than to live. Then the Lord said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry? Father, I just pray today that you would speak to us, your people today, through your scriptures. Father God, as we look at this object of being angry with you, is that right for us to be angry with God today? God, I pray that your words would encourage us and help us if we have the wrong attitude, if we're in the wrong place, Lord, to repent, to put our heart in the right place and have the right attitude towards you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Speak to your hearts, God, as we open up our hearts and our minds to hear the Holy Spirit's voice this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you look at the end of chapter 3, I think chapter 3 of Jonah is where the story should have ended. Because chapter 3 is like every good thing happened. You had a huge revival that happened in the community. Jonah finally was obedient. He went there and he preached. 120,000 people got saved. 120,000 people repented. It's, it's like the perfect ending to the story. It's like kind of, remember you used to watch the, the Wonderful World of Disney and you used to have at the end, you had Tinkerbell come up at the end and just hit the little thing and then poof, it all disappears and everything happened lived after ever and you're just like, yay! That's the way the story should end. If I was writing the story, I would have ended there. But God is writing the story. He did not end the story there. God wanted us to see the story of Jonah because I believe this. <clears throat> I believe God wants us to understand that he uses flawed people. If you look at the story of Jonah, this is a story about a flawed person who didn't respond to the grace of God, who didn't respond correctly to the mercy of God, who was angry at God. God uses flawed people. And if there's anything that should give us hope today, it's understanding that God can use us because all of us here are flawed people. If you're a perfect people, if you're a perfect person today, you probably aren't comfortable here because the rest of us aren't. Right? We're all flawed. And I think the reason God kept this story in the scriptures is because he wants you to realize that even people used by God can be flawed. You know, sometimes they put pastors up on a pedestal. You know, if you put your pastor up on a pedestal, don't knock him over because that would hurt. Because it would fall and that would hurt. Okay, all right, well, you know, because pastors are flawed people too, right? We're not perfect people, we're flawed people. And everybody here is flawed, so we need to understand that. Now, what was, what was Jonah's flawed reaction to the grace and mercy of God. Look at verse 1. <clears throat> God's mercy displeased Jonah exceedingly, and Jonah became angry. The Bible tells us that Jonah was angry with God. Do you know why Jonah was angry with God? Jonah was angry with God because God had been merciful to Nineveh. And if you look at verses 2 and 3, I want you just to read this, just to hear the words of Jonah. Jonah says this, Lord, was this not what I said when I was still in my country? Therefore, I had previously 
fled to Tarshish. For I know that you are gracious and merciful, Lord. I know you're slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness. I know, Lord, that you relent from doing harm. Therefore, now, Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. God, I knew, I knew what you were going to do. I knew you were going to show mercy, Lord. That just makes me so mad. These people deserve what you were going to pour out on them, God. And how dare you turn back now? You need to wipe them out. You know, he's just so mad that God would choose to do that. Verse 2 actually starts off with a word. So the Lord prayed to Jonah. That's the weirdest prayer I've ever read in Scripture. It's kind of an I told you, God. I told you this is why I didn't want to come here. It's not much of a prayer at all, actually. But that's what the Scripture says is a prayer. And this is where Jonah begins to express his reason why he ran. You know, to be honest, I don't think that's really the reason Jonah ran from God. I just think the reason Jonah said this is because this was a way for him to blame God for what happened. It's not truly what he felt. I don't think when he ran, he ran because I know God is merciful and God's going to do the right thing, so I don't want to do that, so I'm going to go the other way. I really feel like in this moment, he was mad at God, and so he had to justify the reason he was mad at God. Many times, if you've been angry with God before, you probably didn't have the best reason, so you tried to find the best reason you could to be mad at God. You probably didn't have the best one, but you're going to make up one. And I think that's what Jonah did. He made up the best reason why he could be angry with God. Have you ever been angry at God for something? You ever been mad at God because of something? Usually, if you're mad at God, there's a couple of reasons why people are mad at God. Okay? Number one, first reason why people are mad at God is because God didn't give us what we wanted. This is actually what Jonah was mad at God for. Jonah was mad because God didn't do what he wanted. Maybe you're mad at God or you've been mad at God in your life because what you prayed for didn't happen. You didn't get what you wanted. You ever been mad at God because you prayed, I prayed really hard, God, and I didn't get what I wanted? You know, I've raised, I have four kids, I raised four kids, and, and my kids will often come to me and say, Dad, this is really something I want. And at times, it's not what they needed. At times, sometimes what kids want isn't really good for them. Dad, I want to have chocolate for breakfast. And I'll say, here you go as long as you share with me. <laughs> Just kidding. Because <laughs> it's chocolate. You're going to say, no, that's ridiculous. <laughs> right? Sometimes your kids, they come to you and they, they want things, and you know what they want isn't good for them. And so as a parent, what do you do? You don't give them what they want because it's what's best for them. Do you realize sometimes we approach God and say, God, this is really what I want. God sees what that will do to us down the road, and sometimes he doesn't give us what we want because it's not good for us. And sometimes that's hard for us to expect. It's hard for us to understand. And so we get angry at God because God didn't do it. You know, sometimes even we say, God, but what I want is really good and beneficial. It's not something bad. You know, guys, we have to trust that the judge of the earth will do what's right. We have to trust that God knows what's best for us, even if we don't get what we want, okay? The second reason people get angry at God is because they go through something unexpected. Everybody in this room is going to go through a season of difficulty and challenge. Everybody. Jesus said this, made this promise in the scripture. He said, in this world, you'll have tribulation. Woohoo! That's a, that's a good one, Jesus. Thank you. I'll keep that in my precious promise Bible book that I have. In this world, it's going to be tough, guys. And it, it is. This world is tough at times. And when you're going through something difficult, many times you'll ask God, God, why am I going through this? God, why me? What did I do wrong? God, what? why me? And I think, I don't think he... I don't think you'd be a believer very long before you ask God that question. Why me, God? I don't understand. I don't know what's going on. I thought I, thought, I, I, thought I knew what was going on, and all this unexpected stuff is happening all around me. Sometimes when we're praying, we don't feel like we're getting the answer, and we're just asking and questioning God why. And sometimes that questioning turns to anger. God, why is this happening? I'm just angry at you for this happening to me. We blame God for the circumstances of our life instead of embracing him. Don't cut off God from your life when you're going through something difficult. Instead, choose to run to him. Because that's what you're going to do. You're gonna, if, you get, if you allow that why God question to resonate in your heart, that why is going to turn into, God, you could have stopped this. I'm angry at you. Why am I going through this? This is your fault. And instead of running to God, you're going to blame him. And that can grow in your heart and grow into something really evil. So you need to make sure... Don't, just because you're going through something difficult, don't blame God. You know, if you look at Jonah, what his, what his rationale was for being upset with God, listen to what he said. God, you're gracious and merciful. God, you're slow to anger and abundant loving kindness. God, you're the one who turns back from doing harm. 
all these attributes of God he was mad at because God had shown those attributes toward Nineveh. You know what the real truth is? God had showed all those attributes to Jonah. When Jonah ran away from God, God loved him, God pursued him, God saved him from harm that could have happened to him when he was thrown overboard. Everything that Jonah is complaining about, God's mercy and grace, that was extended toward Nineveh had already been extended to him. Can I tell you something, guys? Sometimes we get mad that God extended grace to people that we didn't like, forgetting that God had extended that same grace and mercy to us. Sometimes we're like, look at those people go, how come, Lord, how come you're not burning those people up? Those are wicked, wicked people. And God's looking at them, you really want me to burn the wicked people? You sure about that? Because the Bible says this, but such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and the Spirit of our God. Guys, we've all been there. We've all been there. And we're all equally worthy of God's wrath, and yet God gives us grace. And don't be mad at the grace God showed somebody else when God showed you the same grace. Because that's what Jonah was. He got mad that God was showing someone else grace. Here's what the Bible says in Isaiah 53. It says, all we like sheep have gone astray. Each one of us turning our own separate ways. But the Lord laid upon him the iniquity of us all. So you know what? All of us have gone the wrong way. All of us who have received grace should look at someone who's receiving grace and saying, praise God, I was exactly where that person is. Instead of being angry about it. But Jonah, Jonah decided he was going to be, he decided he was angry. He decided it was over. So God asked Jonah this question in his anger. In verse 4, he says to Jonah this, is it right for you to be angry? Jonah, is it right for you to be angry? That, by the way, is a really calm, rational, reasoned question. Is it right for you to be angry? If you're angry with God today because of something that's happened to you, something you're going through, or if you're angry at God because you haven't received the thing that you've asked for, I'm going to ask you that same question. Is it right for you to be angry? Is it right for you to be angry? Let's say, if you choose to be angry, let me tell you something. What anger does, anger will put you in a, a place that you don't want to go. It'll put you, anger will cause you to do stupid things. Anger really will cause you to do stupid things. Now, Jonah, he decides to eloquently answer the Lord about that to his question. Do you know how Jonah answers the Lord so eloquently? You know what he says? He doesn't say anything. Because the Lord was right and Jonah was wrong. Rather than trying to say anything, he decides to walk away. Look at verse 5. This is what he does. So Jonah went out to the city. And he sat on the east side of the city, and he made himself a shelter and sat under the shade that he might see what would become of the city. So here's what Jonah does. Okay, so God, I'm mad at you. God says, do you have a right to be mad? And Jonah goes, yeah. He goes out, out of the city, into the desert. He sets his little lawn chair up, gets his little umbrella drink with a little umbrella sitting in it, and he sits out there, and he says this, God, you said you were going to destroy the city in 40 days, and I'm going to sit here, and I'm going to wait for you to keep your word. You better do it. He's just sitting out there in the desert. Now, just to kind of relate some information to you, um, where, modern, where, where ancient Nineveh was, modern-day Mosul, Iraq is, in the hottest times of the month, there's basically four months that are sweltering hot in Mosul, Iraq. It gets up to an average temperature of 109 every day. Okay? Now, as a comparison, those of you who lived in Idaho, the hottest July on record in, in, in our experience has, was in July of 2017. July of 2017 was so hot here in Idaho that we actually got we actually broke the record of consecutive 100 degree days plus the 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 largest average July temperature was in 2017 in July. It, since they started keeping records in 1877, we've never had a hot July like we had in 2017. It was hot. It was it was sweltering hot. The average temperature that month was 94 degrees. Not 109. The hottest month in Idaho's record was only 94 on average because not every day was 100 degrees. You think about that. 
Mosul, Iraq is 109 degrees. That's hot. And where is Jonah in that hot season? Do you know where he is? He's sitting in the desert. Isn't that stupid? Isn't that stupid? Wouldn't that be the last place you would want to go? But just to, because he was so angry with God, he's willing to sit out in the 109 plus degree heat just to prove God wrong. Just to prove God wrong. If you are angry at God, you will hurt yourself trying to hurt him. When you're angry at God, you're going to hurt yourself trying to prove and hurt him. So what does God do to his little, his little prophet soldier sitting in the desert? Just as God had prepared a storm in Jonah chapter 1 and a great fish in Jonah chapter 1, God prepared a lesson for Jonah to instruct him and to bring him back into the right place, to get him out of the desert of stupidity back to the place where he should be. These are the three things God prepared. Number one, God prepared a plant. Number two, God prepared a worm. And number three, God prepared a wind. Those three things. Because God loves us enough to not allow us to die in the desert. But let me tell you something. Even though he loves you enough, it's going to hurt sometimes to learn that lesson. So, first thing God prepared in the scripture is God prepared a plant. Verse 6 says, and God prepared a plant to come up over Jonah that it might be shade for his head and deliver him from his misery. And Jonah was very grateful for the plant. This plant growth was a miraculous thing. Plants don't grow like this in the desert. Even plants that are hollow and plants, I've read a bunch of a speculation of what kind of plant it was. Some people say it's a melon plant. Some say it was a cucumber plant. Some say it was like a little palm I don't know what it was. I think it was miraculous in what it was because no plant grows in a day. My wife can grow anything, and she can't grow a plant in a day. That just doesn't happen. You know why? Because it's miraculous. Matter of fact, Jonah had to recognize this was miraculous. Maybe he even thought, oh, God's trying to say he's sorry to me sitting in the desert. He gave me this nice palm tree to calm and cool me off. <laughs> I'm right. You're wrong. We would never do that to God. But Jonah might have. He was sitting under that palm tree, and he was enjoying it. As a matter of fact, uh, the New King James says he was very grateful. The uh, New International Version says he was very happy. So Jonah, who was very angry, went into the desert, is now happy for the plant. Do you know how hard it is to be happy and angry at the same time? You ever been trying to be happy and angry at the same time? Sometimes our kids get mad at us, you know, like, and then we'll say something, and they'll, they'll, it'll, it'll be funny but they're trying to suppress the humor and it's because they want to stay mad, you know? So they're like, their mouth looks like it's going into seizures. It's like, you know, I'm just trying not to laugh, but it's funny. And I'm trying to be angry. <laughs> you know, because when you guys, listen, when you are angry and, some, and, and you're happy at the same time, you have to actually choose to continue to be angry to continue to be angry. Anger becomes a choice at that point. Like you can't give, you can't allow yourself to be fully happy because you have to choose to hold on to that anger. You have to choose to say, you know what, I'm not surrendering that anger, God. You're not going to get off that easy. I'm still mad at you, even though you've done something nice for me. I'm still mad at you. I'm going to hold on to that anger. Guys, if you hold on to anger, that anger is going to destroy you. If you've had in your life to say, you know what, I'm not going to let anger go. I'm going to hold on to it. You're exactly in the same lawn chair that Jonah is. Even though good things have happened to me, even though I should be happy, I'm not. You know why I'm not happy? Because I'm still angry. And that's where Jonah was. So what did God do next? God sent a worm. Look at verse 7. And so as the morning dawned the next day, God prepared a worm, and it damaged the plant as it withered. Jonah got to enjoy this plant for one day. The grace and the mercy of God had been extended to him, and he had enjoyed it for that whole day. And the next day, he looks up at that plant and goes, that doesn't look right. Something's wrong. And by the heat of the day, that thing was withered and gone. And he went from being happy to being sad because he recognized that the thing that God gave him was now gone. He recognized that now... I'm sitting here in the desert, and the grace and the mercy of God that was given freely to me is now absent. God has removed his grace 
from me. Do you realize God can use big and little things? You think of a worm. It's little. God can use big and little things to get your attention. God will use whatever it takes to get your attention, even if it's a worm. And so what God was trying to teach through the worm was that God had extended grace to Jonah in an instant that grace had been taken away. There's nothing, there's nothing more interesting for us as a people to recognize that the grace that God gave us can be easily taken away. If we choose to be in the wrong place, if we choose to allow anger have a seat in our hearts, we're, giving, we're, we're allowing God the opportunity to remove grace from our lives. And you'll never appreciate grace until it's gone. Some of you might be going through something difficult right now, some troubles right now, and, and you think, boy, it's really bad, Pastor. You can't imagine. But let me tell you something. If you might be going through that, but the grace of God is still shading you, you step out of that grace, your life could get a whole lot worse. And sometimes we don't appreciate God's grace until it's been removed. And that's exactly where Jonah was at. He, is, he freely accepted the grace. He loved it. It made him happy. But the moment that grace was gone, he began to say, God, this is sad. Why did you do this to me? It was the same process that already began in his heart. God, why? And so lastly, God sent the third thing, which was the wind. What's it like to be outside God's mercy? God sent the wind. Verse 8 says, And it happened when the sun arose that God prepared a vehement east wind, and the sun beat on Jonah's bald head. Okay, it doesn't say bald head. I just made that up. So that he grew faint, and he wished for death himself, and said, it is better for me to die than to live. When you are a great distance away from God and life gets really hard, you don't want to go on. That's exactly where Jonah was. Uh, by the way, the idea of him giving up on life, does that sound familiar? It should, because in verse 3, he just said it. He got angry at God, and he said, Lord, I want you, I, I'm done with this life. I'm finished. Here he is. The grace of God is removed from his life. He says, God, I'm done. I'm finished. I don't want to, I don't want to experience this anymore, God. I'm done. The Bible says that he grew faint. He was exhausted. He was physically and emotionally, I think even spiritually exhausted. And God's word was there reminding him of the choices that he made. God says, look, Johnny, you didn't have to be in this desert. I didn't put you in this desert. You chose to be there. God never sent Jonah out of the city to go sit in the desert. That was Jonah's choice. He was in a place where he chose to be, and now the grace of God that had been extended to him was removed, and he was hating the place where he was. And guess who put him there? He did. When you get angry at God, you're going to end up in the angry desert. And in the angry desert, you're going to be in a place going, God, why, are, why is all this bad stuff happening to me in this desert? Well, God never returns you out to the desert. Do you realize the whole city, 120,000 people in Nineveh, had, had, had vowed to serve the Lord? What kind, of, what kind of reception would have Jonah had as the prophet who brought that message to the people? Do you think he would have been received as a prophet and welcomed? Absolutely. But because he rejected what God did, he chose to sit in the desert instead. He could have been in a palace, but he chose to be in the desert because he was mad. And that's exactly where, if you're angry with God, that's exactly where you're going to end up. You're going to be up in the desert. You're going to be uncomfortable. You're going to be alone. You're going to be frustrated. And you're like, why isn't God doing what he's supposed to do? I got my lemonade and everything, and I'm sitting here waiting for God to move. God's like, you're not supposed to be in there. You stepped out of my grace a long time ago just because of your anger. God doesn't want you to be angry. He wants you to embrace the mercy and the grace that he has. And so God brings Jonah full circle. In verse 9, God says to Jonah, Jonah, is it right for you to be angry? And then he goes on to say this about the plant. God doesn't say it's right for you to be angry against me. He said, what, is it right for you to be angry about that nice little green plant that I made for you? Jonah, if you won't understand, if you won't have compassion for 120,000 souls because you won't because you love that plant more than you love those people. How many times do you and I love people more, or more, more, more things than we do people? How many times do you and I choose to say, you know what, I would rather have my life be comfortable than, than have other people be, experience God's mercy and grace? And God's here saying, Jonah, you need to wake up. You need to understand. You need to understand that, that, that my mercy that you enjoyed is the same mercy that I celebrated and gave to all these people. 
You embraced mercy when it was directed at you. You rejected mercy when it was directed at people you didn't like. How is what happened to you any different than what happened to Nineveh? Johnny, your heart needs to have a change. You need to stop being angry with God, and you need to accept who he is and what he's doing and trust that God will do what's right. If you're here this morning and you're struggling with anger toward God, I'm here to tell you what you need to do is you need to don't allow your anger to take you to a place that's outside the will and the grace and the mercy of God. It's time for you to let go of your anger. It's time for you to let go of the hate. It's time for you to choose to embrace the mercy and the grace of God and to celebrate that today. God wants you to do that. Don't allow, don't allow the anger you have for God to separate you from his purpose in your life. Can we bow our heads and close our eyes? Father, today we just pray that you would speak to our hearts this morning. Father God, that you would help us to see, Lord, that the mercy that you've extended to us is the mercy that you've also extended to others. And help us, Lord, even if we don't like those others, I pray, God, that you'd help us to see that it's, that that's what grace is. Grace is undeserved favor, even if the people that get it are more undeserving than me. It's still undeserved favor. I've received it, now they have. Father, we thank you for that today. God, if there are people here today that are angry at you, maybe they're angry because of something you, something you didn't do. Father God, maybe there's something, they're angry because of something that happened in their lives. Whatever's the cause of their anger today, God, I pray that they wouldn't cause you to be the object of it, but rather, Lord, they would look at you as the person and the one they can run to to find help, to find solace, to find relief today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Change the attitude of our heart from running from you to running to you, we ask in Jesus' name. Can I ask you all to bow your heads and close your eyes this morning? And I want to just ask just a real vulnerable question for you today. My question is this. Are you angry with God? It's the same question that God asked Jonah. Are you right to be angry? Is it right for you to be angry with him? And maybe in your life you've allowed something to you kind of allowed anger to creep in your heart. And even through some times where you could have let that anger go, you've chosen to hold on to it. You've chosen to hold on to that anger today, just like Jonah did. And God wants you today to make a choice to let that anger go, to get you out of the desert and back into the place where you should be, a place where God's mercy and grace is in abundance. And so if you're here this morning and say, Pastor, I, I've got anger in my heart. I've allowed, it, I've allowed this anger to grow and to fester in my heart. I've been angry at God for whatever reason, maybe something that happened in your past, maybe something that's going on right now, but you've been angry at God, and God is speaking to your heart about letting that anger go. With every head bowed and eyes closed, if that's you this morning, and God is speaking to your heart about the anger that you have, would you just raise your hand wherever you are? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else this morning? just want to give you a chance just to be vulnerable with God. Thank you. Anyone else? Just to be honest and say, God, I, I, I want to let this anger go. I need to let this anger go. Because God wants to help you. He wants to put you in a place where you can recognize that what you're holding on to isn't helping you. It's just hurting you. It's just hurting you. Father, today you see the hands that have gone up around this place today where people are just being vulnerable and saying, Pastor, I... I just, I just need prayer. I just need help letting this anger go. I've held on to it for so long. Maybe it's even, it feels like it's such a part of me now. I don't even know how to let it go. God, just by acknowledging the need to release this anger, just acknowledging the need to change where they are, Father God, that's the beginning of that journey of letting that anger go. And God, it's not right for us to be angry at you. Lord, even if we feel we have all the reasons and rationale of why, it's not the right thing to do. Father God, we want to run to you. We want to come to you, Lord, as a person who gives mercy, who gives grace, who gives us the opportunity to find hope and fulfillment in our life. Jesus, we run to you today. We ask, God, that you'd minister to us in a powerful way today in Jesus' name. I, I pray for every single person here that acknowledge their need for you to minister to them. God, I pray you'd minister to them powerfully right now in Jesus' name, that they would let go of that anger even now today. Jesus, piece by piece, they would let it go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to your people through the story of Jonah. Father God, that you demonstrate your love to us over and over and over again. 
Thank you, Lord, for the love that you've expressed to each and every person that's here today. God, speak to our hearts continually through your word as we meditate upon it through the rest of the day, we pray. Bless each person as they go their separate ways today, we ask in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of River Life this morning. If you need to go, you can be dismissed. If you want to hang out, you can do that as well. God bless you. Have a great, great day.